Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to see different services available in Kubernetes. So let's get started. Now firstly let's understand what is service in Kubernetes and then we'll move on the different services available in Kubernetes. So why we need a service in Kubernetes. So if you are already familiar with the different resources available in the Kubernetes cluster and if you are not I have already created a dedicated video on that I will link that in the description below so you can check that out. In that video we have discussed about pods and different components. So everything we deployed in Kubernetes that will be a pod. The pods are ephemeral they are tend to destroy and they tend to create whenever there is an issue in it. So when this particular things happens when a pods are created and one pods are destroyed a new IP address is created for that particular pod. So whenever a new pod is created a new IP address is assigned to that particular pod. So suppose if we have an application that is a user service and we are deployed that particular user service with three of the replicas. So all the three replicas all the three pods will be having the three different IP addresses. Whenever there is an issue with it any of the pods may destroy and a new pod may be created and for that particular pod a new IP address will be created. So to connect any other applications to that particular user services it's not feasible to maintain the IP addresses like because every time the pod is created new IP address is created so it's not feasible to connect the different services using those particular IP addresses. So for that we need one service that will be connecting to all those different pods available behind it right. So service will be the foremost part of the different pods that we already create. So suppose there are three different user services that we have replicated. So for all those pods we will be creating one service that will connect all those particular services and it will also load balance those particular pods also. So whenever a new request comes to that particular service that service will decide which particular pods are available and which particular pods are able to receive those particular requests and accordingly the load balancing will happen and we will be getting one service with one stable IP address so that with that particular service we can connect the different application that we already have in our entire application. So this is the reason that we need a service in a Kubernetes to connect the different pods. Now how this particular service connects to a different pods available. So it connects based on the selector that you provide in the service. So if you consider this particular deployment that we have created for a user service that deployment contains how many replicas for that particular user service that we need to create and on which particular port all this particular services are running. And for that particular deployment we can create a service so in that particular service we define this is the selector and in that particular selector we define the labels. So whatever labels that you have defined in your deployment or in your pod the same label you have to define in your services. So that will match together and a service will be attached to that particular deployment or particular pods that are created using that particular deployment. So that service will be acted as the load balancer and a endpoint to all those internal pods that are already running. So this is the reason that there are services available in a Kubernetes. So there are four different types of services available in Kubernetes that is cluster IP, headless service, node port service and load balancer service. So we will go through all of them. So let's start with the cluster IP. Now cluster IP service is the internal service in the Kubernetes cluster. That means all the services that you create using the cluster IP type that will be accessible only internal to the Kubernetes cluster. So any traffic coming from outside. So suppose if you want to hit any of the service with IP address and port number directly from the browser it won't be able to access that particular service within the Kubernetes cluster because it is only internal to that particular Kubernetes cluster. Now why we need the internal services. Internal services are used to connect the internal components or internal resources of the Kubernetes cluster. So suppose if we take the example of a microservice application where we have a user service department service API gateway and all the different components. So that means all those particular different components has to be accessed internally only. So suppose you, your user service is connecting to your database, your department service is connecting to your database. So all those particular things are internal to the cluster, internal to the Kubernetes cluster only. So you have to access everything internally. So all the traffics coming from outside for all these particular things there will be only one API gateway which will allow the different traffic to the internal Kubernetes cluster. So that is the another part that we will be going to see in the later part of the video. But yeah cluster IP means all this particular 
services should be integrated internal to the Kubernetes cluster. So when you create a cluster IP service, there won't be any external IP assigned to that particular service. Only the internal IP would be there and the port number would be there. So only internal resources can connect to each other. So the cluster IP would be the ideal services that you'll be creating a lot in the Kubernetes cluster. So most of the times you'll be creating the cluster IP services only for your Kubernetes resources and you might create one ingress component that will allow all the traffics to your Kubernetes cluster and that particular request can be traversed internally through your internal services that you have already created. So this is how you will be able to create the cluster IP and this is the most common service type in the Kubernetes cluster. Now the next come is the headless service. Now if you have seen my earlier video about the stateful set in the Kubernetes cluster where we have seen why we need a stateful set. So this headless service is actually used when we create a stateful set. It is mainly used to define a particular DNS name or a particular service name that we want to connect to from our different Kubernetes resources. So let's take one example. We have a database for our different applications available and we have to connect all our applications to that particular database. But when we create that particular database using the deployment, we might get a different pod name always, right? Because when you create a pod using the deployment, you'll be creating with the dynamic or a random hash number. But when you create a pod using the stateful set, you will be getting a particular DNS name or particular host name every time using the replication factor that you have provided. So suppose if you have three replicas, it will be having zero, one and two as the unique identifier to define all those pods. And this is helpful when you have a distributed database, right? So suppose if you have a MySQL where you have a distributed architecture for that where one of the master nodes and multiple slave nodes will be there where your master node will be used to read and write the data and your other slaves node will be used to read the data. So to get that particular master node to save the data and to get those particular slave nodes to read the data, you need a defined service name and a defined host name or a DNS name to connect to. So for that, you create a headless service. Now headless service is just a internal cluster IP service without the IP address because you don't need an IP address. You just need the name DNS name. So all the services, all your applications, pods can connect to it. So with this particular headless service also, you will be creating the cluster IP service for that particular stateful application so that other application can directly connect using the particular cluster IP that you have created cluster IP service that you have already created and this headless service will define the internal purpose to get your service names. So mostly this headless service is used when you are creating the stateful set resource in the Kubernetes cluster. So the next service available is the node port service. So when you define a node port service, you have to give the type of the service as a node port and you have to define the specific attribute that is a node port and this particular node port is available within the specified range. So with that particular range only, you have to define those particular port available. So when you create a node port service, that particular port will open on an node of the Kubernetes cluster. So suppose if you have three nodes available, so that particular node service will be opening that port in all those three particular nodes with that particular port number. So if you're opening the port 32,000 and creating a node service, then that particular node port that is 32,000 will open on all the nodes available inside a Kubernetes cluster. So that means it's an external service. So all the traffics from the external can directly come to your Kubernetes cluster. And this particular node port service will opening the port on all the nodes. It is not that much secure. So using the node port service in your production application is not advisable. So there is another external services that is being used for that particular purposes. So that is a load balancer service. So load balancer service is just a similar to the node port service, but where it will be treated as a load balancer service, only one port will be open for your entire Kubernetes cluster. It won't be opening the port for each of the nodes available. It will be treated as the external service. One port will be open for your entire Kubernetes cluster and using that particular IP address and port number, the traffic will come to your Kubernetes cluster and it will be able to traverse all the traffic internally based on the different services that we have. So if you are using any of the cloud provider for your Kubernetes cluster, then all those cloud provider have their own implementation of the load balancer. So that particular load balancer will have the implementation of the load balancer service, which you can leverage and that will be act as a load balancer service and all the traffic can come to your internal Kubernetes cluster. So for this load balancer service, external IP will be created just as the node port in the node port also the external IP will be created in the 
load balancer also external IP will be created and that external IP will be for your entire Kubernetes cluster not for the each of the particular nodes. So this way it is more secure than a node port so it's always advisable to use the load balancer service. In, but in the ideal scenarios what it will be used is there will be an ingress component and with that particular ingress component all those internal service within the Kubernetes clusters are called. That is also an ideal scenario that I've seen uh, many places. And the other scenarios that I've seen is for any of the API gateway that you use, there will be a load balancer service created in the Kubernetes cluster. And with that particular service, all the internal service will be called. So any of the approach which is feasible, you can opt for it. So these are the different service types available in the Kubernetes cluster and how they are different from each other. If you have any questions, then do let me know in the comment section below. I will try to solve them as soon as possible. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding. Bye-bye.